Good morning, everybody. I'm Iso Kamara, lecturer in charge of social change. A stratification, we'll be looking at social change, a stratification where it's a model that is so amusing and it encompasses all aspects of our social life, all disciplines. Even when you talk about politics, you talk about religion, you talk about even history. That is why I said it embraces all aspects, all disciplines, social stratification. It is very important. Uh, but we are going to look at a major topic that is social change. It is one of the major topics in social stratification. I decided to select this particular topic, social change, because it affects our daily life. In other words, social change is something universal. It is something universal and that is why I have decided to teach, lecture this particular topic. Secondly, social change could be looked at from various levels, even in politics, not only in sociology, in history, and also even in uh, anthropology, and other aspects, and it is also concerned, or it concerns our culture. Then what is this social change? What is this social change? What does it imply? What is the meaning of social change? As the name implies, it is a significant alteration over time related to behavioral patterns, cultural values and norms. What do we mean by significant alteration? Sociologists mean here a profound social consequences. It could be long-term effect, it could be short-term effect. When we talk about profound consequences, we are talking about what affects us today in our society. So that is why social change is a significant alteration over time with regards to behavioral pattern, cultural values and norms. Because in our society today, we cannot live without social change. It is not something that is static, but it is dynamic. Because in all aspects of life, social change is very important. It is universal and it is continuous. So that is why I said it is a significant alteration over a period of time related to the norms, cultural values, and behavioral patterns. It has a profound long-term effect. For example, when you look at the Industrial Revolution, you look at the abolition of slavery, then you look at feminist movement that portrays the profound long-term effect or consequences that resulted in the Industrial Revolution. Those who are historians, you will agree with me that when we talk about industrial revolution, it was one of the so impacts that created social awareness, not only in the urban areas, but even also it brought about social orientation in the rural area, which opened a gap between those in the upper class and those also who we are living in the lower level. That was the Industrial Revolution. Industrial Revolution all here is telling you about changing 
the social behavior of people, from the primitivity, or from the primitive aspect, to a well-recognized modern society. And that is why, in those days, in the 14th, 15th centuries, the peasants advocated vehemently. That brought about the social change. That brought, again, brought about a significant alteration with respect to their culture, with respect to jobs. And that that industrial revolution created not only jobs or facilities for young people in those days, but it brought about a social orientation and that of the stratified society that existed in a primitive society, in a don't trolling society, that is between those in the upper class and those who are also in the lower level. And the peasant, as I said, we are used as a strong, we are used as strong weapons to enhance the social change. That is a long-term or profound long-term effect we are talking about here. When we look at also the abolition of the slave trade, that is a profound long-term effect. Moving from the, the primitive you know, ways of life in which uh, slaves or people we are taken to Africa to work physically for the whites in the new world. But that abolition of that slave trade is a long-term profound effect because it does not only change the deplorable situation of the peasants or the blacks, but it also enhances a movement that we call a riot, which resulted to the political freedom of people. And we are in, it also eradicates the aspect of inhumanity. It also eradicates the aspect of racism and all other sets or norms or bad norms that existed in those days. We'll talk about also the feminist movement in which we see in those days that women glamour for their rights and for their freedom and that they should be liberated from the oppression being and opposed by the men. Those are the trends of the long-term impact we are talking about. They are all encompassed in what we call a social chain. So it's a significant alteration over time and related to behavioral patterns. And the behavioral patterns I've explained with respect to industrial revolution, that of abolishment of the slave trade movement, and also the feminist movement. So those were some of the changes that occur, and that is what we call a significant alteration over time with respect to behavioral patterns, with respect to cultural values and norms. That is, in short, a background of social change. That is, in short, a background of social change. And also, we see that those who are discontented or displeased or satisfied, dissatisfied, broke out, brought out some profound strikes in the area to bring about a change. This change could be positive, it could be negative. So when we are talking about social change here, I said it is something that is dynamic. We are not only looking at the positive aspects, but also there are factors that may affect the positive you know, enhancement or development of social change. And we can really see that social change because of the dynamics of the, you know, of the topic, social change brings about a lot of uh, discontented you know, uh, movements with respect to aspiring people who decided to bring about certain important theories like looking at the functionalism, the conflict theories, etc., etc. These are all the products of social change and they culminated greatly to the development 
of not only the Ivoria patterns, but also with respect to culture. And we cannot live in a society without culture, because culture is part of our lives. And some of these norms, if they are not observed, then the society will be so volatile. So in brief, social change is a significant alteration over time with respect to behavioral pattern, cultural values, and that of the norms. And as I said, these changes we are talking about, sociologists mean or believe that it will bring about profound social consequences, be short term or long term, as the case may be. This is briefly an introduction of social change. It's a model in social stratification. Now, we are moving forward to look at certain aspects or subtopic uh, under social change. And what are some of these subtopics we are looking at? We'll be looking at the characteristics of social change. In other words, characteristics here we are looking at what are the features, what are the dynamics of social change. We'll be looking at functionalism, social change, you know, but let us see the characteristics of features of social change. How will you, as a potential student, realize, or as a sociologist, realize that there is a social change, or a social change is prominent, or a social change has occurred here? What are the features, what are the variables, what are the tenets that normally we look at? A society to say that this is a social change. Of course, as I said, social change it encompasses every aspect. But there are certain characteristics or tenets, there are certain features that we can attach to a society which can be classified as social change. These are some of the characteristics we are going to look at. The first one is universal. Social change is universal. Universal. What do you mean by social change is universal? It is present and everywhere, irrespective of the rate of at which it occurs. But social change is universal. It is universal in the sense it's got it's all is about all aspects. It concerns all aspects of life. In other words, it's present in all society and at all times. In all society and at all times. In fact, no society remains completely static. When you are static, that is society that cannot progress. No society remains static. That is why I said this model is dynamic. Look at it in politics, you will see. So society here we are talking about, no society remains static. The society may be even primitive, modern, a modern society, or it could be even rural or urban society, but still universality is there, is prominent here. Or even if it is a complex society or agrarian or an industrial society, still the concept of universality here is prominent, present and everywhere. That is what I am seeing. That is, it is constantly undergoing what we call change. The rate of degree of the change, that one, may vary from society to society or from time to time. But every society keeps on changing because a changeless society is an unreality, whether it be planned or unplanned, but society must allow what we call changes to occur, whether in a complex society, an agrarian society, in a rural society, in an urban society, but we have to observe and see that change. So the product of social change, the, one of the characteristics of social change is that of universality. It is present and everywhere. You can identify a society looking at 
the product of that society. Be a complex society, be a rural society, be an urban society, or even be an agrarian or industrial society. Still, universality plays a vital role in that society. In the Industrial Revolution, you can see in those days that the society was so stratified, which divided or brought about a division between the upper and the lower class. That is the industrial society we are talking about. A modern society today we are talking about is an urban society, urbanism. You look at the cities, the great cities in Britain and other developed countries. That is a modern society. We can see that the society is divided. And you can see the operation of racism and other aspects is all part of a stratification. It's all part of universality. So that is why I said it is only the rate, the rate or the degree at which it operates, it varies from society. But what is prominent there, the importance of universality in that particular society plays not only a social aspect, but it brings about a unique aspect of a well-planned society in that area. So the next bullet point here, after universality, we talk about here, we call continuous social change. The characteristics, one of the characteristics is continuous. What do we mean by continuous? Social change is a continuous process but not an intermittent process. Continuous process, not an intermittent. Intermittent could be, you know, go and stop, go and stop, that is intermittent process. No, it is a continuous process. Whether it is being done planned or unplanned, nothing can stop it. So it's a continuous process, not an intermittent one. That is what we are seeing here. And not only an intermittent process. Why? Because the changes are never stopped, nor the societies are kept in museum to slip them from stop. Nothing can stop them. That is why I say it could be even planned. It could be what unplanned. It could be natural. It could be artificial. So it's a continuous process because it is an ongoing process without any break in the process of change. Every society grows and decays in the presence of growth, in the presence of change or growth. The society what grows or it decays. Decays means decline. Don't only look at the positive aspect, but you look at also the negative. So, for a society to grow, it has to go through a lot of stages and the event what we are saying it could be successful why because the change can be successful it grows it decays it can decline decline whether it finds a renewal or accommodates itself to various changing condition the sources direction rates and forms of change may vary time to time but it is always continuous so nothing can interrupt social change in a continuous process. Nothing can stop or prohibit or prevent a social change. It's a continuous process. That's why I say it is dynamic. It is not static. It has to go through a lot of stages. It grows, it decays. Even a deplorable society, we have seen that one, it decays. And I was just very details, people become discontented. That's why sometimes discontent is a major source of weapon to bring about a change. That is when it is well planned, according to Karl Marx and other sociologists. That one will be explained later. So it's a continuous process that nothing breaks it. It is an ongoing, dynamic, not static. That is what we mean a continuous. That is the second bullet points have advanced. The third one, it is inevitable. Social change is inevitable. Inevitable here, we mean it is unavoidable. 
In fact, our inborn capacities, biologically, you know, has promoted a change in our human system. That is why even biologically, when we are born, you see, we see the aspect of growth coming in our lives. The aspect of growth biologically in our development. For example, when even a child is born, you are not expecting, or you cannot prevent that child to grow. There are certain inborn capacities that you cannot stop. Those natural potentials, you cannot stop. You see a child grows up from that level, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. It happens. In sociology, you can even see at certain times the generalized order. You can see a child coming up to imitate or copy exactly what the adults normally do in their day lives. That tells you about the changes that have started occurring in the lives of all the children. That is a growth we are talking about. That is a potential or what we call you know, potentials that we have identified that cannot be prevented, neither prohibited. So you can see those inborn capacities. They are inevitable. Because we are born with them. That is why naturally or some people believe, or from Goldie's philosophy, he says, we are born evil. Man is born evil. We only tend to suppress our evil tendencies. These are inborn capacities. So they cannot be prevented. So what we are saying here that social change in the aspect of being inevitable, it is unavoidable. We cannot go without social change in the society. That is why it is inevitable, unavoidable. Just like a child that is born today, you expect that child, you are expecting that child to grow. The child grows up. It's a generalized order a situation you can see a child imitating certain things from the mother. And that generalized order. So, when that growth has started, you can see certain potentials, certain things you can identify very positive to the society. That is why we are saying it is inevitable. You will not stop it. Why? Because it is a human nature that desires change. Human nature will desire change. As you are growing up in a society, and all it is what? that we have this tendency to bring change and to oppose or accept change. We can oppose and, and what? Accept change. I'm just giving you, for example, an episode or an, a scenario. When we had a war, the NPRC war, we see the demonstration. When we had this 10 year 10 years crisis, the rebel war. In the 90s, you can see that it was difficult for people to accept the reality of the situation because the crisis brought about a profound social consequences on our lives. People were killed, amputated. So many people lost their lives. Women were raped, etc., etc. It was a prolonged battle, a long, profound impact. And at the end of the day, people came out fighting, advocating, saying that they need change. A change, what was all about the change? They said they needed an election because they waited for the end of the rebel war or the crisis, it did not materialize. So they were not talking about change. And the change was to have an election, a peaceful election, and that peaceful election consequently will bring about peace and stability in the country. That is the change we are talking about. That is the aspect of inevitable. That is why I said that when we are talking about the change, the change here we are talking about, it is a change that either we can oppose or accept. So when 
a platform was created, the people accepted election. So you can oppose the change or you can accept. In our daily lives, in politics, we got that experience again. When the APC lost power, that is a change. People, we are yearning for a change, a social change in the political arena. That another party has to come that will liberate them. So either we can accept a change or we can oppose it. That is why I said it is something that is inevitable. Because our wants are many. Human wants are many. Our wants are many or are unlimited, which always keep on changing. To so satisfy these wants, social change has become a necessity. Not only to man, but also to the society. And that is the change we are talking about. So it is inevitable. You cannot stop social change. We met it there, our grandfathers. And for a change, so you cannot change that one within a day. That is a change. So the first bullet point we said, Social change is universal, continuous, inevitable. Then see we can continue with the characteristics, but looking at it from this perspective, that social change may be planned or unplanned. When you talk about plan, you are talking about something be strategized. You are talking about something well organized. You are talking about well, something well you know, implemented or taken care of. Unplanned, of course, as the name suggests. It could be either by mistake, it could be even on, it could be also something natural, something you are not expecting. So social change may be planned or unplanned. Social change takes place sometimes with planning and sometimes without planning. Social change which occurs in the natural cause is called unplanned change. Social change which occurs in the natural cause is called the unplanned change. Natural cause. You are not compared. It happens naturally. The volcanic eruption and other elements, these are all pointers. And they are all pointing this aspect of being unplanned. It happens. It occurs in the natural way. The unplanned changes are in fact spontaneous. It is spontaneous, accidental, or even the product of sudden decision. Accidental, like volcanic eruption, those are all elements telling us you, but you are not planned. Usually the change resulting from natural calamities, even like we have this drought, farming, volcanic eruptions, are all instances of what? unplanned changes. You cannot stop them. Like what happened uh, at the hill there in the western area where we have this road in there. You cannot stop volcanic eruption because it is something being unplanned. It is a natural consequences that you cannot stop. That is the aspect we are talking about. So when we talk about plan now in that situation, it is well strategized, well organized. It's not spontaneous, it's not a mistake. You can see that as in the case of Karl Marx, when you are becoming what dissatisfied in the society because of abnormalities or because of the present situation so deplorable, you can come together, sit on the table, plan well, strategize, and you can implement what a change in plan. That is the planning aspect. It has to deal with the physical aspect of human being. It is well artificial, well coordinated, and it is also always motivates people. That is why Karl Marx in his theory, the complete theory, when he raised a strong and vehement opposition against certain, you know, against a society that was divided. So in a nutshell, let me give you a 
summary of what I have discussed. Social change is a topic that we dealt with in the first semester with the honor student. And the topic is social change. All about social change is a significant alteration over time with respect to behavioral patterns, cultural values, and norms. And it is important that a society cannot progress without social change. And this social change, as I told you, sociologists may or believe that it will bring about profound social consequences. The consequences here we, can, we are talking about, the significant alteration could be a long-term profound effect on the lives of people. For example, you look at the Industrial Revolution in those days. He talk about the abolition of slave or the feminist movement in which the women glamoured over their rights. That is the aspect of social change. That is a background. And I went further to explain to you characteristics or features of social change. I spoke about one. I said, social change, it is inevitable. Inevitable, you cannot avoid it. Inevitable, because we have inborn capacities that one cannot prohibit. You cannot retard, neither prohibit. I say it is a continuous process in the sense it has been, it is dynamic, not static, and not static. It is not like an intermittent process, it's a continuous process. We are born with social change. We met it, our forefathers they have practiced the culture, the norms. You cannot change it over time. You cannot stop it over time. So it's a continuous process, it's a dynamic process, and it also entails or embraces all works of life. You look at politics, you look at religion, you can see changes in the church. You may have a stratified society. You have those also institutions where stratified. Where stratified, the hierarchy you can see. So it's a continuous process. And I said, it can be planned. That is, when talk about plan, it is strategized, coordinated, and it is well directed, as in the case of Karl Marx. On plan, it also involves human beings. It happens sometimes in a mistake, accident, or a sudden decision. But it could be also also natural disaster that you cannot prevent. So it could be in the physical forms, it could be visible. Then in that situation, social change will always manifest itself. So once more, if you have comments, you can send a comment. So I'm see a lecturer in charge of this model, Isok Kamara. Of course, BA. Education, LAB honors, MSc, sociology, MED, education, and a PhD research student at Probe College. You can send in more comments or look at capitalism and other areas. Um, I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Iso Kama, for that wonderful lecture. I know, ladies and gentlemen, you enjoy what he just taught. And if you want to continue enjoying more from him, if you want to continue to chat from his academic blessing, then you need to continue to like his videos, you need to continue to comment on his video and share. And at the same time, don't forget to subscribe so that anytime we post or post a video in this channel, you will always get the notification. God bless you.